I wanted you all to be able to see this because this is pretty much the closest thing we've gotten to as far as clinical trials kind of stuff. So this is GW Pharmaceuticals. Clearly it was in 2017. GW is the one behind most of the cancer patents whenever it comes to cannabinoids and cancer. The data that they use to make those patents come out of a, a team in Spain at the University in Madrid. I think it's called Compultense, or Computence, something like that university there. Compultense, I think. And um, so you got Guillermo Velasco, you got Manuel Guzman, you got Cristina Sanchez, all those people on those team work with GW Pharmaceuticals to make anti-cancer drugs, specifically Sativex, that they used here in this study. Now, whenever it comes to cannabinoids and cancer care and tumor treatment, they have found that the effectiveness is based on duration and dose. So the, they're dose and duration dependent as far as... Um, dropping the tumor volume or killing the cancer cells. So the problem with these studies is that they're limited doses and they're limited durations. They only have so much money funded to them so they can only have so much materials and for only so much time. And whenever it comes to this, sometimes it's hard to find certain types of um, patients at certain degrees within the disease, the certain progression levels within the disease to be able to allow them to live long enough to see if we can get this thing down. A lot of times, when these things are, um, these studies are being used, it's my recurrent patients. So these are patients who have already had it, surgery, chemo, radiation. It's either that they aren't, or yeah, so we either got recurrency or we got no respondents. So with no response, they try and do this. And with uh, recurrency, they try and do this as well. Instead of starting with somebody that just got diagnosed, we know that when something recurs, recurs a tumor comes back up that is from the stem cells that have grown deeper and deeper that we don't see on MRIs and we can't see visually on like skin cancer and stuff like that. So um, this is where, you know, cannabinoids come into play, specifically with stem cells as well. It's not just the eradication of the visible tumor on the MRIs or um, CAT scans or anything else you're using to monitor it, but the actual ability for it to take out the stem cells so that it doesn't come back. So given that whole idea of stem cells and the fact that the, they come back stronger whenever the tumor reoccurs, it's going to be even harder to treat. So these graphs that we're looking at are people who have, are going to be harder to treat, tumors that are way more aggressive, and um, that they were only given so much of a dose for a certain amount of time. And so instead of being in a clinical perspective, whenever we're actually going to start looking into this in Texas, we would hopefully, and the intention is to have access to all the cannabinoids, at any ratio they want to, at any dose they want to, so that they can start mixing things together, creating entourage effects. THC induces apoptosis. THC also works against cancer cells in angi angiogenesis, which is uh, whenever the tumor tries to gain access to a blood vessel or create a new blood vessel for it to get food, um, more stabilized food. Uh, so anyway, we're, I'll go through all that in other videos, or I have gone through all that in other videos. This one in particular that I want to focus on this um, graph right here and how they came about doing that. I'm going to read really quickly just a little bit up here. And this is from GW Pharmaceuticals, which is where we get, and I already said that, but that's where we get Sativex, um, which is how this this uh, study was conducted using Sativex. And uh, let's see what else about them. Um, oh, they're also the ones behind Epidiolex here in Texas. So if anybody in Texas says, oh, we can't trust any... Um, companies out there that are making this stuff well, we're already buying a product and we're already having it prescribed to patients here in Texas for seizures. So the same company that's doing that is also the ones that are doing this. So we can't discriminate against their data or their findings just because we don't like the area of medicine that they're working in, i.e. cancer versus seizures. So this is their uh, two points or three points for a strong rationale for cannabinoid use in oncology. So a wealth of existing evidence within the literature, existing literature, regarding the anti-cancer activity of cannabinoids in animal models. So that's a reason, a rationale for bringing cannabinoid use into oncology, that we have a, a wealth of information already regarding the anti-cancer activity of cannabinoids in animal models. Now we say animal models because we really, this is the, one of the first clinical trials I think that GW tried to put together, or did put together. But... We know that it's not necessarily, will it work in humans, will it work in rats, you know, that type of thing that they usually have for different types of medicines. This has to do with receptor activation. So if you got THC circulating around a cancer cell 
and the cancer cell has CB1 receptors and those things are activated, there's going to be a chemical cascade that comes and it's going to end in a uh, apoptosis, which is induced cell death. And cells go through this naturally, uh, just as they, as they age, but THC and CBD, or THC specifically, activates and induces apoptosis, as well as protect the surrounding cells. So even if a, the CB1 receptor is activated on a neighboring cell that hasn't yet been what they call transformed or turned into a cancerous cell, um, then that, uh, then it protects it and right next to where it's also killing the cancer cells. So instead of chemo coming in, killing cancer and killing the cells next to it, it just focuses in on the non or on the transformed cells. Next is in preclinical models, THC and CBD were more effective than THC alone in reducing glioma cell growth in the presence of temozolomide. So temozolomide or TMZ or Timidar is the brand name, is the chemotherapeutic agent that is used in brain cancers. Brain cancers don't use IV chemotherapy because um, that chemotherapy has a hard time passing the blood-brain barrier, so they use a uh, pill form of chemotherapy, and that's temozolomide. Next, in preclinical models, THC, CBD, and TMZ were more effective than TMZ alone in reducing glioma cell growth. So right now, we're only using TMZ. And this is saying that TMZ, CBD, and THC were more effective than TMZ alone. And also, I would imagine that THC and TMZ would be better than TMZ alone, and CBD and TMZ would also be better. Uh, CBD has been found to have anti-proliferative uh, capabilities, and um, of course, it's more accessible to the public, so that would be a good thing. But you won't be able to match what you can get here from the c collaboration of those three drugs. Now I want to focus in on this, these graphs real quick. The vehicle is basically what would happen if you did not treat the tumor at all. So you can see the tumor volume goes, just keeps rising and rising and rising over the days. The green one is the THC and CBD. So you can see how good THC and CBD um, affect or um, inhibit cell volume or cell tumor cell growth which is what adds to the volume um, now we got the TMZ which is the chemotherapeutic agent that is used and that is the red one but the red one the reason that it is effective uh, I would say more than the THC and CBD alone is because it's essentially a poison you're, you're still trying to kill all the uh, cancer cells and then of course it will affect non-transformed cells within the brain and there's even chemo brain, but I think that's more so with IV treatment. So the TMZ, the, that one's there. And then whenever you can add, or combine all three, the TMZ, the THC, and the CBD, that is the purple line at the bottom. So you can see that they're all three are better than just the two THC and CBD, and then better than the TMZ by itself. And... Uh, yeah, so you can just see the synergistic activity on U87MG glioma xenografts. A xenograft is where they take a tumor, they implant it into a mouse, and then they let it grow, and then they treat it from there. Um, this has to do with survival time, given these types of treatments. Uh, and you can see that the purple one goes all the way across, and that's the combined of THC, TMZ, and CBD. Um, the study used Sativex to, as their THC and CBD um, mixture. Sativex is also made by GW Pharmaceuticals, if I haven't mentioned that already. And um, Sativex is a 1-1 THC to CBD. So they were using 1-1 ratio of cannabinoids and the temozolomide. I don't know where, what um, milligramage the temozolomide is. I'd have to read into the, the study if they even have it in there. So you can see that the purple line, which is the combination of all of them, had the longest survivability. You can see the different ones that pass sooner than that. Um, and yeah, so survivability is also a big deal because that gives patients more time to, for one, live, to be with their fam family. But also, the longer you live, the more treatments you can receive during that time that also might be able to benefit the patient. I'm pretty sure this is all. And you can see down here, investor presentation, right there in the middle. So... This is clearly made so that investors can start producing um, or helping fund GW Pharmaceuticals to start producing um, THC and CBD outside of Sativex or beyond Sativex. 
So this is basically what's going on right now. This is the most recent data out of GW Pharmaceuticals. Again, GW is an accepted company. We have one here in the U.S. We have a satellite office here in the U.S. And again, they're the manufacturers of Epidiolex. Uh, Epidiolex is a CBD, um, specifically phy phytocannabinoid, plant-based derived CBD, not manufactured in a lab somewhere. And same thing with the THC. These are both phytocannabinoids that are taken from the plant um, all the sticky, shiny stuff that you see on the flowers, all that's washed off, essentially, and then that is made into the oil that goes into the Sativex compound, that, uh, or Sativex mixture, that they've used here. So, um, this is everything I got right now for this. I love y'all. Please share this with your doctors. Let them see these things. Share them with your family. Share them with anybody and everybody you know that this could help. And even those that you don't, or that you do know that might not need the help right now, but for them to have this in their background, to have this idea for them to bring up to their cancer doctors later on down the road, even if they're 20 years down the road from seeing this. So again, love y'all. We'll talk soon. I'm going to add this right now on the YouTubes and uh, see you soon.